Did you know that certain ammunition in Escape from Tarkov actually reduce the recoil of your gun? If you've been playing Tarkov for a while, you know that one of the most complex systems in the game is the ammunition. There's so many different calibers, rounds within each caliber, stats and values applied to each individual round. Well, in this video, I want to talk about the recoil stat and why it's more valuable to know about now than it ever has been before. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And if by the end of the video you think I deserve it, go ahead and drop a like, maybe a comment down below as well. With all that out of the way, though, let's go ahead and dive into the video. So as the game continues to progress, we start to get more and more value shown to us about the ammunition. Back in the day, it was literally just the caliber and the bullet velocity. That was basically it. Now we're starting to get all sorts of stuff like how much heat it produces, the durability burn, if it's going to make your gun uh, lose durability quicker or faster, a chance to misfire, a chance to fail your feed. We're starting to get more and more information. And if you notice that on certain ammunitions, you start to get this, a recoil stat minus or plus, as you can see over here, some of it's plus 15, minus 24. So the, there's a bunch of different ways that these statistics are applied. Certain recoil things for like uh, certain attachments apply differently. Like this RK2 is a percentage. Uh, some of them are just flat. Each gun has a base recoil, which would be the recoil without any attachments on it. Actually, huge shout out to the uh, content creator Gigabeef he did a great video on this stat, basically uh, using a bunch of different stuff in the hideout, proving that these numbers are basically flat additions or subtractions to whatever the vertical recoil of your gun currently is. Uh, so definitely please go check that video out. I'll link that down below. But we're starting to see this pop up. Uh, and what's crazy is this has actually been in the game for a while, but it hasn't really been utilized. And I think that that is because of the flea market changes um, and just the changes to the economy this wipe, where the higher tier ammo, the best performing ammo when it comes to pen and damage, are no longer purchasable on the flea. They're harder to get from uh, traders and crafts because they made all those things harder. They made the amount you can buy from traders less. And then additionally, on the flip side, the armor and helmets are also harder to get because you need higher level uh, traders, you need more stuff from the barters, and you can't purchase that stuff on the flea. That means that more than ever, the second or third best ammunition in each caliber is more viable. And then if you're choosing between the second, third, or maybe second, third, or fourth best ammo, well, now when you apply this recoil stat, that might kind of flip that order a bit where you would sacrifice a little bit of pen for much less recoil. So we're going to take a look at the wiki and kind of show these stats. So if you head over to the Escape from Tarkov wiki and just the ammunition page, you can kind of click on a caliber and show all of the different ammunition. So the really popular one right now is the 545-7N40 round. So you can see all the different stats. We can actually make this a little bit bigger because there's just so many different things. You can see all the different stats, damage pen, armor damage, accuracy, recoil, fragmentation chance, ricochet chance, the chance to cause a light bleed, a heavy lead, the speed of the projectile. There's all sorts of different stats that we don't really see on the back end. And this recoil stat um, is really, really impactful. So if we sort by pen um, the other way, you can see that most of the time, the top, top, top tier ammos are either going to have a negative recoil or no recoil, and you have to kind of like work your way down. The 7 and 40 is a brand new round that sits, uh, people have wanted around between BT and BS for a really long time, and this round is really, really good. 44 pen is great. 52 damage is actually the highest of the top four rounds, uh, 4545, so that's amazing. And this reduces 20 recoil on your gun, which is pretty crazy, which is why this ammo is so rare. But it does, it's not just the 545. If you take a look at some of the SMG rounds, like for the MP7, if we sort by pen again, you can see the best in slot, 53 pen APSX actually increases recoil. If you move down to subsonic, it reduces recoil by 22, and you're starting to have to make that sacrifice. Only 36 pen versus 40 in FMJ or 53 in AP, but you can make your gun a little bit more of a laser beam. Additionally, on top of all this is they changed the recoil in 12.12. I forgot to mention that earlier. So the recoil on your guns is also perceived to be higher this wipe than it was before. That automatic compensation your PMC does was tuned down. So all that together, the availability of the ammo, the availability of the armor, the recoil going up means that these lower tier ammos are more viable and that you're really looking for stuff that reduces recoil. So the other major one here is going to be the 5.7 round for like the P90 or the 5.7. Uh, if we sort by pen here, uh, you get the SS190 is the best in slot, 37 pen. The 193, though, reduces recoil by 24, and this is a much closer gap. The 193 has more flesh damage, only slightly less pen, and much less recoil. 
Now, as it stands right now, those are probably the three biggest and most important ones. If you look at some of these other calibers, you can get some of these statistics, but they're not nearly as impactful. Like nine mil, the best in slot is PVP. Uh, then you've got nine mil AP, then you've got PSC. The what, This trend is continuing where the best ammo is gonna have a plus recoil stat, but there isn't really any, you go all the way down to T, uh, the tracing rounds, it's minus six. That's not much of a difference, and you're losing a whole lot of pen uh, and not gaining a whole lot of damage there. So most of the other rounds are going to be like that, or they're going to be like all the way really, really bad. So if we look at 7.62, uh, the, the US, the ultra slow rounds, and when they mean ultra slow, you can look at the projectile speed, uh, less than half of almost every other uh, round the really really slow rounds they have a negative 30 recoil which is great the round is okay 29 56 uh, 29 pen 56 damage but like there's so many other rounds that are better cheaper and especially if you're going to be shooting medium to long range so those three the 545 uh, 7 and 40 the mp7 rounds and the p90 rounds are the ones that are kind of providing the most value right now. So now what we can do is we can hop into the hideout and actually kind of show some of this in action a little bit, just so you can see that visual difference in the recoil. So we have, for the P90, we've got a mag of SB193, reduces 24 recoil, uh, and then I'll have a mag of SS190, which is the best in slot, but doesn't provide any plus or minus stat. I only have 48 rounds of it and it's sold out, but that's gonna be fine. So we'll put the 193 in first. Uh, the P90 has 45 uh, vertical recoil. So with the 193 reducing 24, that would be what, 21 vertical recoil, which is really, really good, much more laser beamy. For the AK, I've got a mag here of 7 and 40. The only place I've been able to find these is out of airdrops. Raiders and rogues may spawn with them, but the only place I found it is out of an airdrop. Minus 20 recoil, we'll put that in the first AK mag. And then the Agolnik is a huge swing from minus 20 up to this, adds 15 recoil to the gun. So we'll put the uh, 7 and 40 in there. This AK is close to best in slot, not quite. Uh, it's 41 vertical recoil, and the minus 20 of the 7 and 40 would bring that down to 21. And then the Agolnik would bring that up to 56. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll, we have the MP7 here. The subsonic reduces 22 and the APSX adds 10. So we'll put those in those mags right there and we'll load those in afterwards. So we'll go to the hideout and we can just like go to the firing range and we'll do some tests, no compensation with my mouse. We'll just fire off around and see what the recoil differences are. So we will start with the P90. Our first mag here will be the SB193 and we'll just run right up here, do this. Uh, no laser or anything. I'll kind of aim right at the top of the green line. Uh, and I'm not going to compensate for with my mouse at all. This is just going to be the negative 20 recoil on the P90. And we'll just go. So obviously all rounds have that rise, fall a little bit, and then it kind of ends up normalizing out pretty good. Now this is the SB SS190, which is the best in slot round. We'll move over a little bit. We'll aim at the same spot. No controlling the recoil on my end. So as you can see, the grouping, once it normalizes out, is much wider. And the initial kick, boom, way higher there on the P90. Obviously, this would be much more dramatic the farther back you go, but as, uh, SMGs aren't really supposed to be used super far away. So you can see that right there. This is the same exact gun. The only difference in recoil there is isn't attachments. It's just the ammo being used. So this is a super important mechanic to know. We're going to do the same thing with the AK. 7 and 40. I'm going to try and line up here with this. 7 and 40 will reduce our recoil down to a, around 21. Make sure this is on full auto. Aim right here. No compensation for recoil on my end at all. Big vertical jump there, and it kind of normalizes out. Take a step to the right. Now we've got the Egolnik, which is going to not only normalize this, but actually add recoil to the gun. Make sure we're on full auto. Aim here. No compensation by me. You can see higher spread uh, and a wider spread, much more kind of like erratic as the whole thing normalizes out. Um, a lot of these rounds, once you get to the lower recoil, of course, you're going to have that vertical bump as soon as the gun kicks up. But once it kind of normalizes out and that, you know, PMC compensation kicks in, uh, the lower your recoil, the tighter that spread. And as you can see here, the higher the recoil, we got a much wider and taller spread here. Now we'll do the same thing with the MP7. Got subsonic in here. This is going to reduce our recoil. Aim at the green line. Make sure we're on full auto. No compensation by me. 
All right, boom. Now we'll reload to the APSX, which gives us a little bit of a bump in recoil. Make sure we got the right ammo in there. We'll take a step to the side so it's easier to see. And huge difference there between the APSX. This is like the 545 where APSX actually increases recoil and the subsonic decreases recoil. So you see those big, big swings. That was a huge difference there in the vertical bump. Of course, it still normalizes out, but that grouping versus this grouping is a pretty big difference. So that is it. That's just like a really quick rundown. Uh, obviously, it's up to you to decide what you want more. If you want the better pen, if you want the better damage, or if you want the lower recoil. I'm a full auto guy. I'm not very accurate on semi-auto. This wipe semi-auto and DMRs and stuff like that are much, much better than they've ever been because you can use those higher damage, higher pen rounds and just kind of tap, 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 not have to worry about the recoil stat because you don't have to worry about full auto. But I just thought this was interesting. It's a stat that's been in the game for a while, but has never been more valuable and important in my opinion than it is right now because of all the changes to the game. So it's cool to see, in my opinion, more choices being made on what ammo you want to run. Um, and what's cool about almost all of those rounds that reduce recoil is they're much more available and they're much cheaper. The 193 round that you can purchase from uh, Peacekeeper, you can purchase an infinite amount of it and it's cheap. It's only $2 as opposed to the SS190, which is twice as expensive and you can only buy 120. The uh, Subsonic, you, you buy from Mechanic and uh, it's much cheaper than APSX or FMJ and you can buy 600 of it as opposed to just like 90 or 100 of whatever APSX is. Uh, so there's a lot of value here outside of just the recoil stat. Cheaper, more available. I like those, the more choices. So I hope this helped. I hope this kind of showed you how much of an impact this can have in your raids so that you're more confident in your choice of ammo when you go into your raids in Escape from Tarkov. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to check out this video. If you liked the video, think about dropping a like, commenting down below, or subscribing to the channel for more content like this. I stream Escape from Tarkov on Twitch. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by and say hey. And if you're looking for people to play Tarkov with, our Discord server is an awesome place to be. That link is down below as well. Thank you again for stopping by, and I will definitely see you all on the next one.